Flavolina, the small western green drake, uh, very prevalent on a lot, a lot of our waters throughout the, the Yellowstone area here. Um, and uh, can be a really, really important fly. It starts to come off anywhere then, you know, we're starting to even see them earlier in June, but typically towards the end of June through, through July, uh, where we see those in Yellowstone. Uh, but again, emerger being extremely effective pattern for this. He is quite a bit like our famous green drake, except for he's smaller. Uh, typically size 14, might get down to 16s. This is a 14 here. Um, a little extra longer hook though, like the Dire the Dairiki 300s um, are a little bit longer than, than standard hooks. Uh, so I, I tend to use that just because we are emulating uh, kind of the same thing, that adult pulling out of, or having the shuck on in the, in the whole shebang here. So same thing, we're gonna start, oh, on this guy, just about half Halfway up the usable shank length, and we're going to work back to our tail set position right above the barb of the hook. And we're going to do that move again. We're going to put a little under. Uh, a little under emulating the, the trailing shuck with a gold amber CDC. And we're going to cut that kind of short again. About the gap and make them a little bit uneven just so it's not raw going across there. I want to take some pheasant tail and we're going to use this first tail. 14, you know you can snag whatever you think here. I'm going to, I'm going to take uh, Six fibers, I think. Get those tips even. Right about there. And we're gonna lay those again just so they're extending a little bit past the CDC. Come back to our tail set position. We'll lift up behind there, make one wrap behind again. And over the top, we can splay them with our thumb here a little bit. And now we're going to take a biot, turkey biot. You could use goose biots. When you start to get to a 14 and bigger, I think you'll find if you've got some good goose biots, you'll be able to do 14s. But this isn't longer hook. Uh, but once you start going to 12, Pretty much have to go to goose biots as opposed to, I mean turkey biots, excuse me, as opposed to goose biots. We can see right here, there's a little notch right here. If I install this, if you can see right here, there's a, there's a little notch right there. If I install this biot this way with the notch going towards the eye of the hook, I'm going to get a raised edge, kind of like the, the, the hurl on a, on a hackle, or, or a, like peacock, that it'll have this raised edge. If I flip it around and put that to the back, it's going to cover that little hurl edge and it'll be a smooth body. 
I tend to like to have that little ridge. You'll see this ridge pop out on here. And uh, one, I think that there's more surface area there. So for flotation, I think I get a little bit better flotation out of it. And I just like the looks. I'm just going to go right back up. Okay, we just palmered that up, and hopefully you can see that little raised edge right there that I was talking about. Right here, these little ribs. We just we have more surface area on the fly, so uh, as far as flotation, I think we're getting a little bit better flotation there too. Kind of a dark olive. And we're just going to kind of make a, a little bump of a thorax here. Just kind of simulating that this thing's just emerging. And I don't really care too much if it's, if it's a little spiky and kind of all over the place. As one, I'm going to get enough flotation out of, out of all the materials I'm putting in here. But also I think it just gives it an effect of, uh, you know, as that thing's emerging or stuff moving all over the place. Um, another thing that I use quite a bit of, Snowshoe Rabbit. Extremely buoyant. Really, really floats like a cork. Um, and there's a lot, this, this is a very nice foot here. Uh, this is dyed, uh, but there's typically three sections of a rabbit's foot. We have this back end from about here to here, which is relatively fine hair. And then we have a middle section, which is about from here to here. Most of the time, our most important part for a time. Then we have the tips up here, which pretty coarse uh, and uh, not quite as buoyant. Uh, but again, uses for every part of this. this is a very, very nice rabbit. It's almost one thing all the way through, basically, about from here on up. So, some really, this stuff, again, you don't want to uh, take and put floating on this. Uh, this stuff will float all on its own. And you can use this in various ways. Like lots of times, all this little under hair here that I'm pulling out, I'll, I'll save that and use that for kind of a, a dubbing. I'll end up mixing that in, making, making a dubbing out of it. But I want a little bit of that in here for flotation, and I want some of that coarse stuff for the tips also. Okay, I know that's about what I want for a wing. So everything in my right hand behind those fingers, I don't need any of that stuff. This is all I need for the effect that I want. So anything that I would tie in behind, the material that's behind that, 
I'm just tying in excess bulk. So I'm just going to grab that right there. Now, I'm going to get rid of all the, the rest of that. And I'm just going to go to right about to where the tail set position is. So a little short wing. Pinch technique. And we got a nice little wing. Come in. Trim all that out. And we just got some kind of green drake saddle hackle. A little big. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the on the one there. Take a couple barbules off the bottom, so it gives my stem a little time to start its tracking. Come up underneath that thread. Just lay my stem right in there. And we're ready to go here. The first one I do, I do one wrap behind that wing. In this case, I'm actually going to put another one. And that's going to stand that wing up, and it's going to keep it up there, and keep it from collapsing. And we're just going to walk it right down to my thread. A couple over. And you got a little flavor merger.